All right, and we're live. Woo! <laughs> eee! All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the fifth episode of Magnificency Huang, a Wraith the Oblivion campaign ran by the lovely Tag Sessions. Uh, can't believe it. It's our last two episodes of the game. And yes, I have the same hair like Ali now <laughs> in this episode. But yes, um, we... Uh, we're in the thick of it, close to the Spooktober season, and of course it's sad that next week's gonna be the last episode, so be sure to not only tune in tonight, but also for next Thursday for the epic conclusion of this magnificent story about death. So, I will give the lovely floor to Toby uh, to give us a little bit of recap, but I also want to give a heads up that the two episodes of uh, the fourth and fifth episode will be uploaded on YouTube um, and it will be available by next week. So if you guys want to check out the VODs, the highlights of the story and want to relive the excitement, the horror of the cozy Wraith games, you can check it out over at YouTube. Also, if you guys, um, these two lovely people are also part of the Curseborn campaign over at Onyx Path, which will also be in YouTube. So you can also check out their episodes uh, within the next few weeks as well. So lots of things to catch up on, uh, especially what happened last week. So we're going to give the floor over to Toby. Woo. Hello, everyone. I'm not sure if I'm coming in clear, so if if any of you watching realize there's some audio issues, do let us know immediately. Yes, we, we have this knack of having audio drama <laughs> <laughs> or connection <laughs> moments. I know, right? <laughs> so, like, um, we are connected. Yeah. Yes, we are connected right now. Um, we, we aren't cursed right now, so <laughs> we're doing much better. But, um, yeah. So this is episode 5 of Magnificent Siwang, our cozy Wraith the Oblivion game. Um, and since we are in our last two episodes, before I go uh, uh, and share the summary and all that, I need to ask a vote from my two players. Do we keep this cozy or do we plummet into darkness? I'm all for plummeting into darkness. I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm, I'm in. I suppose we could take a little swing. A little dip is fine. Yes, yes. I mean, we are about All to right. bring to our bring ourselves to a close. Yeah. With that, um, with that vote now entered, I need you both to roll um, before I go to summaries. Um, just double checking how many. Da -da. Yes. Um, Ali, uh, Mars, basically for Ali, you you will roll seven d ten, and for Ace, you will roll five d ten. Hmm. Okay. As always, we play with safety tools intact. Um, among our safety tools are lines and veils, which are visible on screen. We have lines against COVID or pandemics, kink, sexual assault, and spiders. Um, and we have uh, veils on harm to animals, babies, and children. Uh, we also have an open table rule. So if ever there's anything more pressing, feel free to step away if you have to, whether it's family, um, personal life, work, whatever, you're free to leave the game uh, temporarily or permanently if you desire. That's really up to you, and we respect that because the game is just a game. Uh, and lastly, we do check-ins. Every now and then, when we do anything intense, we might be like checking in if we need to go, keep going or tone down and the like. So for Ali, we have an 8, a 6, an 8, a 9, and things lower than that. And for Ace? 5, no. Yes. Pain. I actually don't know what Earl <laughs> is. So seven one yes. ten one nine. Uh, uh, so that's spicy. seven one ten one and nine. Okay. Thank you so much, both of you, for rolling. I just need to sing with your shadows. So let's go to the summary. Um, as of. Uh, 
So overall, the story has been the story of two adults who were both part of the magnificent um, university. Uh, one being a member of the family that <clears throat> that owns the school, and the other one being a former student who is now a teacher. Both have been tremendously close and attached to Sir Wang, um, the grandfather of uh, John's character Ace, who in many ways uh, epitomizes and represents everything that makes the school awesome. Um, but with Sir Wang now older, um, both Ace and Ali have been positioned to take over the school. Unfortunately, they died. And as of episode four, um, Ali found herself in the grips of something known as a harrowing. A harrowing happens when a wraith loses enough corpus that they uh, disintegrate from being physically present and are forced into a nightmarish version of their memories and of their environment. A test of their resolve if they can return, uh, which thankfully she was able to, or find themselves obliterated. In her harrowing, she lived a false life of a few more months of thinking she was back among the living. And there she was uh, horrified by moments of people questioning her right to exist, questioning her choices, and questioning her, her very survival. Uh, but thankfully, she broke free and was able to return back to one of the places, one of the fetters that was important to her, that being the library. Ace, on the other hand, uh, after escaping the rain and the prayers of Aling Indai, the helper in the house who seemed to be gifted with the ability to see ghosts, um, Ace found himself um, reconnecting, uh, well, connecting with someone who he had met earlier and not realized it, Harun. Harun was a formerly earlier dead character who in his black hoodie had been attempting to help Wraith uh, um, deal with their newfound existence. Uh, Harun helped Ace grasp better his powers as well as the strange relationship he has with the Shadow. And while they were at the library, they found Ali re-emerging there. Um, with the three now um, finally together, um, they they attempt to use Harun's powers to peek into the things that are important to them, that being Sir Wang. And from the visions they see, they find Sir Wang in the grips of a medical emergency. Using their various mm -hmm. powers, they called for assistance. Um, but their use of powers had summoned or attracted the presence of a specter. And while Ace dealt with the specter, Ali found herself um, getting trapped in the seduction of being able to reconnect with the living to the point of even attempting to reconnect with someone she used to have feelings for. <laughs> uh, with Ace chasing after Ali, the two eventually make their way to Sir Wang's place to see that the emergency services were there, their families were present, um, all nervously awaiting to see what had happened. But the two wraiths step inside, and to their surprise, they find Sir Wang thankfully well, but addressing them as if he could see them. Right. And that is where we ended last session. And now we begin episode five. And episode five will begin in a very unorthodox way because we are choosing to plunge into darkness from, from this point on in our last two episodes. Um, so both Denma and John, um, I will have you both take turns in the opening sequence. As we have a flashback sequence, <laughs> you are both playing Sir Wang. Who would like to start? What? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, um, uh... Okay. Ooh, I mean, so who would like to start? I I'll take a jab at it's it. It's really interesting. I'll take a jab at go, it. Go! Go for it. Alright. It is decades ago. Oh. And Sir Wang is a young man. And as a young man, Sir Wang is currently um, crouched low 
close to a growth of um, bushes and um, branches. Um, Denma, we'll start with you, Esther Wang, the young man. Mm -hmm. Your stomach is rumbling. You have not eaten in a few days. Ooh. The war has been ongoing. Warlord and Ooh. you are the last of your squadron. Oh my of your regiment. God. Oh no. All over the Philippines, soldiers, foreign soldiers, and for sake of um, sensitivities, we need not elaborate on the historical significance of this event. <laughs> but foreign soldiers have um, have been in the country, and you are among the young soldiers trying to liberate us. But you have not eaten in four days, and not far from your hiding place is a house. Mm -hmm. The house is standing alone in this vast field. It is a beautiful house, and deep down, you are hoping it is a house where you could find some sanctuary, perhaps some food. Um, the last time you saw any other fellow soldiers was practically four days ago, and that was after a violent shootout with the foreign soldiers. Okay. Okay. You were the only survivor. Oh. What do you do? Um, instinct right now. If it has been four days, the the hunger is clawing. It's it's no long. It's the the few days it would have been numb, just adrenaline of trying to get as much distance away from events. But seeing the house again, the comforts. It feels like for the days he never thought he'd be in any semblance of a home or any semblance of a house. And in that moment, the numbness of his stomach, which would signal like, you know, like uh, almost like losing the will to live, the hunger claws at him to signal that he wants to live. And he runs to the house. He doesn't know if there are people in there. All he can think about is this is home. This is a place where he can get food, where he can get shelter. He tries to, uh, assuming this is like a small bungalow type house. Uh, no, no. This is a three-story manor type of a house. Ooh. Those, those. Well, sorry, not three. Two-story. This two-story old Filipino homes, you know, okay. with a balcony that allows people to watch outside, and okay. you know, the the slanted roofs and the okay. the multiple entrances. You have the main front door, but you have the side Do exits as well. Do I have a gun well. with me? With... Yes, you have your rifle. You have like two bullets left. Um, your canteen is empty, your food rations are gone, you still have a compass somewhere in your pocket. Do you try the front entrance? Do you try a window? Do you try the rear door? What I, do you do? I actually, in my hungry state, all I can think about is food, but seeing that it's a house in the middle of nowhere and it's the war, I look for vehicles if there's anything parked, if it looks like any of the foreign vehicles, because usually these kinds of houses would be used as outposts assuming it's yes. like so he tries to look frantically if there's any cars vehicles that would signify a foreigner has been here and if there's none he will bolt straight to the front door given your near delirious state of hunger and desperation your ability to accomplish things seems to ebb and shift every moment to represent this in the game both of you will still use your own character sheets on any roles necessary. <laughs> this represents how sometimes desperation makes your stats better or weaker. Okay. Um, Denma, as you try to survey for any vehicles that are parked there, you may roll perception alertness. That is five dice. Okay. Try to spot if there are vehicles. Okay. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good thing because um, uh, Ali is very paranoid so this is good. <laughs> very good. Uh, please? No, nothing. <laughs> you scan and you search, and had this been um, using the newer rule set, then yes, you got nothing. But because this is classic World of Darkness, difficulty numbers are variable. <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, you have a four, a four, and a six, which is three successes. Oh, okay. It is not hard to spot a vehicle that is parked here in this house, given it is an isolated house in the middle of fields, right? So from your hiding spot, you do locate one car. It's an old car. It's a bit, um, it, it's a bit battered down, but it definitely is still serviceable and functional. It is parked in the garage. And as you stare at it, um, you also notice not too far away from where the car is parked um, are strands, um, strands of uh, twine that are having clothes right now left out to dry. The realization that this is a habited place both fills you with hope and terror. And we shift to John real quick. Uh, John, as you continue the scene, Seeing the car, seeing the clothes, and yes, players, feel free to quietly coordinate and chat if you want to coordinate moves for <laughs> because you are playing one character. How do you approach the house knowing, yes, the car is there, which most likely means someone is home? But is it a foreign car is, is established? Cause like, there's no, a no, it's a local car. Okay. Ooh. It's a local okay. vehicle. Okay, cool, cool. That's Jeep me. <laughs> Young Jeep. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with uh, Mars's original intent, which is that I haven't eaten for four days. I need to find something. Like, okay, there may be people here, but well, gotta eat. So, window, door, window. You approach the nearest window. You no need for the roll. Quiet afternoon, no one is, uh, no one seems to be about. You don't hear anyone as well. Um, and as you traverse the distance and reach the wall of the house, and you're now under the window, um, you can hear inside the sound of something sizzling. Someone is cooking something. And the Ooh. smell reaches you. It's this delicious smell of 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 something salty and something fatty and it makes your stomach growl in anticipation do you climb in through the window do you decide to risk the front door do you sneak in through the back uh mm, that's tough uh Stomach grumble noise. You <laughs> try, try to peek in through the window, I guess. Standing as tall as you can, you, you try to peer through the window. It's a, it's a bit of an effort. Windows are a bit high up in these houses. Um, you try to back away to try to change the angle and try to see better. And from what you can see, at least without a roll, um, the house is tidy you could see the walls you could see the ceiling there are no cobwebs or anything um you could um see the curtains by the windows and they're clean they're not soiled or dirty or crumbling um the, the sound of cooking is more distant you think it's a few rooms away from this window at least mm -hmm. i will now require a perception and Let's see. This one's less about alertness now, and I think we can say it's more about larceny if you'd like to pick up useful details. Or you could stick to perception and alertness if it's more general information you want to know. Mm. General info, I suppose. Okay. Your perception alertness is there for three. The hunger must be making it harder to focus compared to earlier. <laughs> uh, so that's three, three D ten. Yep. Uh, ooh, um, yeah. You try to focus. You try to listen in. Um, you catch. 
you catch someone humming and you realize it's coming from the same area as the cooking which you estimate to be at least 30 40 feet to your right it's like you know or another room or at least two rooms right you think the window is clear yeah let's go for it clamber up You leap, grabbing hold of the window's frame, and as you pull yourself up, your boots scraping against the wooden wall, your rifle rattling behind you as you try to do this as quietly as you can. Uh, I'll have you roll Dexterity Stealth to see how successfully you do this quite. Oh my gosh, that's uh, terrible. <laughs> normally, you probably were better, but right now, you only have two dice. <laughs> Ah, oh, double fives. And as you get onto the window itself and hoist your leg over, um, it is only that moment that you realize leaping in front of the window is a dog. Oh, from inside? Yes. The dog has not noticed you, thankfully, because you did not botch the roll. But we now shift back to Den Mother as you take control of the character and con continue staring at the dog sleeping just below you. Mm, um, I mean, assuming it did, it does not see me threatening its asleep. Um, I hear the cooking on the other side. I assuming what's the smell of the food? What what's the do we get to smell it? It's 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 fatty and salty, so you think it's meat. I think you think they're frying pork. Oh, okay. I um I try I ignore the dog in this point in time, and I will just let my presence be known. I get to the closest door window of where it's cooking, and I just knock. So you slip into the room. Yeah. You quickly move past the sleeping dog and approach the door that seems to lead to the kitchen. Yeah, and I... On the wall to your left, you see multiple picture frames of the different members of the family. You know how those old houses are like a yeah. wall of all these photos from from whatever age they could have been to. Given depending how wealthy the family was, they would have those photos. Yeah. Um, and then as you reach the door itself, in front above the door, there's a larger painting this time of the 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 matriarch and patriarch of the household um you get to the door and you rap at it the dog has not stirred thankfully and you hear the humming voice approach the door um, the woman seems to be singing a love song and uh, the next thing you know the door opens but as it opens you see the woman on the other side already turning away and heading back to the stove she's still humming to herself as she leaves the door to slide open and she starts going back to the food and muttering ay nako bibigyan kita wag ka mag -alala. and continues cooking <laughs> I... you realize she might have thought you were the dog oh oh uh, I, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in my delirium, I'm assuming it, I get weirded out because like, does this person know me? Why does he talk to me like I'm a, like a friend? It's like, I'm delirious. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I'm starving. So I'm like, I take this as a sign of letting my guard down. It's like, yes, okay, there's a kind soul that's gonna give me food. Thank you. I... I walk in silently, like, with a look of gratitude on my face, like, oh, somebody understands. To the side of the kitchen area, you could already see the larger expanse of the room, separated only by an awning, and this, an archway, and this is the dining area. For the dining area, you have a long table, that's probably large enough to occupy around eight people. Six on both, uh, six on the flanks and two on the on the edges. Um, the long table is parallel to those really wide windows 
you know it's like multiple segments of sliding panels to close it mm-hmm. um and that do you wait there or do you approach the person cooking and I, go behind them i mean the way they talk to me i would assume like oh this is a friend <laughs> like they they said they would give me food so i i walk there sluggishly i almost drop my like i s- remove the weight of the rifle a reminder of like the things i've been through i want to let it go i just want to feel like i'm home like i, I haven't been through the worst days of my life just trying to survive and like all i'm thinking about is like i'm home i'm gonna get a food from from my good friend um he continues cooking she scoops out a piece of meat she strains it slightly and then blows on it so it cools down and then she turns to face you the meat cupped in her hands as she blows it to cool it down in that motion, she's also dropping down to one knee. As she offers the meat forward and says, Kaina! She stops. John, she's staring at you. <laughs> Stand, sitting there Pressure. by the dining table. <laughs> Good luck. And she's looking in your direction, startled. You see her fingers starting to tremble as she realizes it was not the dog no, that no. stepped into the kitchen. What does no. what does she look like? Like ano being intro niya ulit, ulit? I forgot. She's beautiful. She has, you know, she has smooth skin. Her hair is neatly tied in a bun behind her head. Her Filipina features are are vibrant and are full of joy and positivity compared to all the faces you've seen in the war so far. She's wearing a a simple um, afternoon dress uh, with a shawl over her shoulder uh, that's that extends down below her elbows. Right, right, right. Um, what about that? <gasps> We're nervous. Okay, I'm gonna be like signaling her to stay quiet and see how that reacts first. How does that go? She's staring at you, and as you motion her to be quiet, you see no response other than her hand still trembling. You hear her ask, Hindi ka aso no? I mean, it's like trying to. I, what what is she holding? Meat on her hands. It's a piece of the pork. It seemed when she thought the dog came in, she got a piece, cooled down by blowing on it, and was about to offer it to the dog. I I gesture without words at the pork, and I'm like. You see no response. And as you see no response, thinking her mind or her heart is probably filled with terror, I will have you roll five dice. Oh my god. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, let's roll that dice. That's so cute though, gesture. Oh, beautiful. You suddenly realize what you overlooked. She's blind. Oh, shoot. And I'm like, um... As you were miming and showing that you will eat, she saw none of that. With her hands trembling, she's looking in your direction, but not looking at you because she can't. And you hear her mutter, Hindi ka yung aso. Iba yung amoy mo. I say, pagkain, please. She reaches behind her, and your your ten you tense up. Alarm bells ringing, thinking she'll grab a knife or something to that effect. Instead, she finds the ladle and she picks up the pot and moves it out of the fire. Huh. She then slowly walks towards you, each step measured, careful. Well, as she approaches you. Sundalo ka ba? Hmm. 
Mach ich. She could continues walking towards you. Uh, you could see the almost step after step because she's counting her steps as she approaches. Marunong ka magtagalog. Fair observation. <laughs> Very fair observation. Uncertain how to react, she has stopped directly in front of you. It's a very measured set of steps that she's now standing half, two, two and a half steps away from the closest chair where you are. And from there, I jump back to you, Denma. <laughs> she still offers the meat. Hey. Funny. I there's like I would say in that moment is like there's a mix of uh, emotions, um, like g gratitude that she can't see me in my state. I probably I'm not as presentable, and a lot of people would turn away, and yet she still offers a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, he would go, um, he would acknowledge and say. Uh, in in the vernacular, in in the Filipino uh, sense, like, oh, you una narinigo, parang kaibigan. Uh, after a long time, like, it's nice to hear a friendly voice. It's nice to hear a friend. For a moment, I thought you recognized me with the way you spoke. And then he kind of looks at the meat in her hand and slowly reaches out cautiously and takes it and goes, Kahit yung aso, naalagaan pa na mabuti. And like, he picks it up and starts eating. Uh, I'll have you roll three dice representing your willpower. Please do not fail me. Unless it's meant to cry, then go. I have cursed. Don't curse me, man. <laughs> okay, no, I'm not cursed. Thank you. <laughs> Emotions well up. You feel your struggle to swallow down the meat because you you feel the that that hikok, that the desire to break out and start bawling out. But you keep yourself controlled and you eat as much as you can. She st stands there, listening to you eat. You see her slowly smile. And you hear her mutter, Kung gusto mo pang kumain, pwede ako maghain. Yun tubig nandyan sa kaliwa. She motions to your side and you see the clay pot with the small faucet. He Those clay pots that are magnificent and cooling water. Yeah. <laughs> he, <clears throat> he, like he nods and realizes he can't see. <laughs> like she can't see him. So it's like, Apo. Okay lang. Apo. Water flows as you fill a glass. You find yourself eating heavily as she brings more food. Uh, the dog quietly moves into the room, staring at you curiously. But the dog sees her feeding you, and the dog seems to decide you're not a threat. Um, as you start stuffing yourself and gulping down each and every swallow you can, um, she reaches for the nearest chair, pulls it, and sits down to join you at the table. Um, John, yeah. she seems to be just content listening to you eat as you gulp down every mouthful you can. I eat, and after a bit, uh, it occurs to me that there's no way she could live here by herself. And I am like... She smiles weakly and she mutters that she is the only one left. Huh? She mentions that she had four sisters and three brothers. Her three brothers have gone to the war. Her four sisters had been taken in the previous week. Oh so, who, uh, I, so I ask if that's the case who lives here now and how does she get 
her food. She explains she lives alone. She's learned to handle the house when she was still young. She lives alone and celebrates each day that comes that the soldiers don't come back. She admits to you that she has had dreams, had hopes. Sana bumalik yung mga kapatid ko. Sana yung mga ate ko o buhay pa. And to your surprise, she diverts the conversation. Kayo ba? May pangarap ba kayo kung walang gera? Kung ano sana gagawin niyo sa buhay niyo? Hmm. Mars, you're muted, by the way, uh, in case you were saying something. <laughs> I just saw your lips moving and I wasn't I'm sure if you wanted crying. to see it. I'm just crying internally and I didn't want anybody to hear it. I just all that noise. <laughs> you don't yeah, want to but, hear but it. But check in. Just checking in. Right. Yeah, just checking in. Okay. John? Yes, I I'm trying to figure out how would a young soldier in that situation respond. And I'm like, I guess he'll just say, after the war I'll see to the next day first then I'll think about what happens after the war the dog growls and as the two of you turn towards the dog growling she stands mm -hmm. up and tells you dali sumunod ka sa akin para ting sila and she starts walking away from the dining room back to the kitchen from the kitchen she continues back to the room you came from when you snuck in what do you do um yeah sure let's follow her following her past the kitchen you see the embers and the coals are still burning you get to the side room where she came in earlier and as we step into that room, Denma, you're in charge. You find her walking towards one of the walls. She grabs hold of the grandfather clock. And she Ooh. shoves it open the door. Ooh. She pushes the beer wall of the clock and it slides open, revealing a small squeeze space. Okay. Dali. Aha. Dito ka magtago. Aha, siya ba tayo? Ah. Ikaw ang magtatago. Paano ikaw? Maraming beses na sila pumunta dito. Kung meron silang balak gawin, ginawa na nila. Ay... Um, there's a pause, it goes, how many seconds before the sound, it goes, because like, on that instinct, he goes, wait, yung baril, iniwan ko. You hurry past her, back to the kitchen, back to the dining room, you pick up the rifle, and from the wide, the really long window, remember I described earlier? Yeah. You see four jeeps closing in. I mean, uh, I duck down and I immediately like rush back to where you know, like I just have to make sure there's no evidence of me. You get back to the living room area, um, crouched low. You see, she's still waiting for you and motioning to go in. The dog is already barking, um, but she motions you to still go in. Heads up, yeah. And then he says, "Kailangan mo mabuhay." I before I do that, I give her a hand squeeze just to let her know like 
I'm all the gratitude that I'm feeling, the fear for her, and knowing how helpless I am, and there's so much I can I want to do for her in that squeeze before I go. She in. withdraws her hand and her shock at the touch. And you realize how forward you were to touch her. Oh. You might have been the first man to touch her. Oh, yeah. I sorry. Sorry, it's criminal to have. Sorry, me. traditional Philippine. I know, right? Sorry. <laughs> World War era. I oh, know, no, sorry. But like in that moment, just human contact of like, please live, please survive, please let me know. Like I'm letting you know. And goes it. And as you duck into the hiding space and you see her pull it close. You are plunged into darkness. The crawl space is barely a foot wide, but it is long. Okay? So, barang, as long as you're standing still and you don't bend forward, you're not going to hit the walls. Okay. There's enough crawl space to move along the wall hiding space, but okay. you can't bend forward. You can't even reach for your feet. Okay. Okay? In this standing crawl space, you hear the doors of the jeeps, you hear the footfalls of the soldiers, you hear their foreign words echoing all around, you hear their laughter, you hear their their statements, you hear her gasping a few times as they probably, you know, joke at her, prod at her, touch her hair, tug at her clothes. The dog barks. But the dog always pulls away. It seems the dog knows at least more than to engage with them. And when you hear the rougher voice clearly demand for something. John, we shift to you. You hear her telling them in their own language that she is preparing them something to eat. John? Yeah. Does Sir Wang do anything while in the crawl space? He waits because that's four jeeps. Please roll Sir Wang's stamina and um, empathy, I guess. <laughs> His care for her will fuel this roll. That's four dice for you. Oh, ah, uh, so many ones. <laughs> no. You feel your leg cramping, and as your leg is cramping, you realize you can't bend down to to do anything. What do you do? I. How do I do this? I bite my. Hola, <laughs> tisinko. You you bite down on your lip. You try to hold and take the pain. You feel the curling pain. You feel it is intense. And in your tense position, your head slips and bangs against the wall in front of you. Ah. Uh. Your eyes widen in terror. You could hear outside the voices. You only wish you could understand what they're saying. What do you do? Um, worst case scenario, if they find me, I'm going to shoot and run. But how? The crawl space is too narrow to hold the rifle rightly. A pistol, perhaps, but the rifle? Sige, pistol na lang. You reach to your side for the pistol that's strapped to your belt. Your fingers start working on the leather straps to undo it. Outside, you can hear the crash, breaking porcelain, shattering glass. You hear her gasp. You hear the dog more frantic in its barking. You hear a gunshot. The dog, uh. the dog is barking further away. You hear, you hear the men laughing. You hear the woman's voice. She's lower. You think she's closer to the ground. Her voice is strong as she speaks in their language. You really wish you knew what she was saying. The pistol's now in your hand, and as you hold it up, you realize you'll have to press it against your chest if you want to use it effectively. You worry how deafening this will be for you. We shift to you then, Mother. 
with a pistol to your chest and you hear the commotion outside. Do you act or do you wait? Um, it's like the instinct to protect. He doesn't want to feel useless. He's he's seen his brothers die and him being the only survivor. He doesn't want to be the only survivor. And yet, in that moment, just like he did for whatever reason in the days before, he only stays. He stays and holds his gun, taking. He doesn't do anything. Sorry, I lost your last your last word. It he was just, a bit soft. He, he stays. He and, stays and hmm? doesn't do anything. He's too frozen. He's too afraid. Because like he's having like Nam flashbacks of uh, like what happened before and whatever it is he did before that made him survive, whether it was staying put. That's what he does. There is a heavy thud on the wall in front of you. You hear her voice as she pleads in their language. She is against the wall. Is there a way for me to And feel, then is there a way for me to feel where it is? Yes. Like uh the sound, can I feel In front of you. It's directly in front of you. You you hear that that that, that someone landing on the wall in front of you. And as you press your hand against it, you could feel with her bre- her breathing, you could feel that wall slightly, you know, from the pressure. Okay. And you can hear her pleading in their language. Part of me, it's like, oh, I want to point the gun and press it on the wall. You just don't know if you'll hit her. Yeah, and then it's just like, he just holds back. Holds away. The thunderous sound is not as loud as the thunderous impact you hear in your ears when you feel something slam into your stomach. You hit the wall behind you and feel everything lose strength as your body slide sidewards to the ground. There is a hole now in the wall and through the hole you see glimpses of the soldiers You see the woman peering, but then pulled away. You feel the darkness crawl around you. John, you're in charge. Fire in the darkness. A cigar is lit. A figure stares at you in the darkness, and the figure looks wrong. The figure has no face. The figure has no skin. It is all blackness. The figure is too tall. Even seated in front of you, the figure towers at least six feet. The figure's limbs are too long. In its sitting position, its knees are past its chest. And its hand is actually touching the ground in front of you, while the other hand holds the cigar to its mouthless face. And the figure tells you, I guess you're dead, Mr. Wang. What? No. I was just alive. Yes, you were. And the hand, which is impossibly long, traces its fingers like like an insect onto your stomach wound. And it starts lifting the corpus threads, showing where the killing blow had landed. I got shot. You what are dead, it? Mr. Wang. And we finally meet again after all those close calls in the last few months. Hmm. Do not worry. You were brave. You have made your family and nation proud. There is nothing you have failed to do. There is nothing to hold on to. No. (laughs) 
I refuse to die like this. But you cannot refuse. He plunges his hand into your stomach wound. He lifts up and you see the thread of corpus and the trails of gauze. And you see inside that ball he's holding, there's this black bullet that's shaking and vibrantly still showing it's there. Your death mark is upon you, Mr. Wang. You are dead. Embrace oblivion. No, it is time to die. How? No. <laughs> Wait, let me think. You I'm... have no family. You have no siblings. You have no home. Nothing binds you to the living. Let us move on to oblivion, Mr. Wang. It is time. Am I still holding my gun? You look down in the ground. You see the rifle is there. You grab it? Yeah. <laughs> I grab the rifle. And as you grab the rifle, where do you train it? Do I still see the soldiers? No. It's all it's nothing but pitch black and this this figure in front of you, this jigsaw of a man. I still need to see what happens after the war. I should... Are you telling me she matters? She who you just met barely an hour ago? Trump. <laughs> Shoot him. Bang. <laughs> you take aim at the figure, the the rifle fires, and we cut back to you, Denma. His head explodes, and as it explodes into this black watermelon with red sauce, the red sauce pulls back and wraps around him like a necktie, and the black watermelon reconnects into a face. You cannot kill your own shadow, Mr. Wang. His other hand reaches and wraps around your head, behind your head. But if you refuse to die, then you must decide. For you know there is nothing but death on the other side. Will you choose life once more for the shortest of moments? Or will you finally let me guide you? In his, in, in that moment, there's like this thought of maybe this could all end now. I'm tired. I like, his mind's like, I'm tired. I've been hungry. I just want it. You remember the hand. You remember the pork offered by someone who did not even know you. But it was that. You remember the urgency, the hiding space being offered. You never got her name. I need to know her name. I need to know her name. You... And as you mutter that over and over again, the flashback end. Our game now continues in the modern day. The two of you are staring at Sir Wang, and Sir Wang is looking at you both and mutters, Aren't you dead? You can see us, How sir. How can you see us? You can see us, sir. The two of you look at each other, and you look back at Sir Wang, and he's looking at you both, and you hear him mutter, Yes. The nearby paramedic looks at him. Sir Wang, who are you talking to? And Sir Wang glances at the paramedic. Motions. It's Ace and Ali. They're in front of me. Uh, uh, sir, Sir, wag mo sabi. Sir, Sir, wag mo sabi. Nandito kami. Patay kami. Oh, patay na kami. Wala. Di, di ko makikita na iba. Sir Wang glances at you, Ace, as if parang is she telling the truth. Uh, she's not wrong. 
only a few people can see us. He stares at the paramedic. Hindi mo ba sila nakikita? The paramedics looking at Sir Wang and tells him, um, dito lang muna kayo, sir. The paramedic hurries to one side and the two of you follow and see that the paramedic has gone immediately to Ramon, your father. I, hey. in passing, I'll say, they're gonna think you're crazy. Why will they think I'm crazy? You're both here in front of me. We're dead. Mumu na kami. <laughs> that is not a good joke. We're ghosts. This is not something you make a joke about. It's not. We're not. It's joking. not. But I, but I, we, like, I'm tearing up. Like, we, we, we did not survive. Didn't they? Te- and I, I pat Ali's shoulder. I'm you like, pat. No, you, you pat who? Sorry. Her shoulder. My, my her shoulder. shoulder. Ah. <laughs> Ali, Ali, Ali's shoulder. Okay. <laughs> Ali's shoulder, is, and I just and I look at my grandfather and I say, "Did they not tell you about the car accident a few days ago?" The both of us. I was told there. I was told there was an accident. Your father refused to give me the details. Me and Ali were in the car accident. We did not survive. But you're in front of me. We're ghosts. Apparent. That is not. That is not a funny joke. Ramon, your father has come to the side. Um, Papa. Ask, Papa. Ask, ask Dad how I am, and he'll tell you. He glances at you. Glances at your father. Ramon. What's this? Your son is saying. Papa. I'll your son is it. saying he's dead. I'll prove you that I'm dead and he can't see me. Dad, I love you. <laughs> ano sabi mo? <laughs> oh my god. I'm, Ramon I'm... does not react to you. See? Ramon is still staring at Sir Wang. See? And see? Ramon mentions. He can't hear me. He can't see me. He can't do anything. Dad, <laughs> we haven't told you yet. But Ace got into that accident and he's not doing well. Yes, because I'm dead. Not doing well. I... Not doing well, Opatayna. Dad. Now's not the time. Oh. 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 And I'm like, see? See? My, you, know, you know my dad would react if I said something. Wow, You're ruining the you. business, Dad. Nothing. Your father seems more concerned at your grandfather than you right now, or maybe he really doesn't hear you. Ali, what are you doing while this is happening? <laughs> I, I I would just shocked Saying with everything. like everything that is is yeah. I'm just like horrified, and I'm like I'm looking at Sir Wang and how he's handling. Is there a way to sense how do you his... want to? Do you want to? Yeah. Do you do you want to check his general health? Remember, you have extreme senses as a wraith. Yes, please. I would like to see. Oh, you... is, is his heart? Life... Yeah, life, please. If there's life a... sense? Yes. That's perception, empathy, difficulty five. Uh, that would be three plus. plus where is my. plus two, five. Okay. Woo. Hold on, the music stopped. Let me just loop that again. Hold on, technical difficulties, product, production crew. <laughs> Production crew while, uh, right. Loop. Yeah, you have five dice. Okay. There. Mm. And we have. Oh, okay, it's good. It's good. Seven, seven, eight, five. That's enough. Difficulty was five. Um, you see the life flowing through him. Uh, game terms. He took three levels of damage as far as internal damage is concerned. Basically, he needs time to recover. Um, but he is alive. Um, his state of mind is of confusion and nervousness. His surface thoughts are... are... This has to be a joke. I can see my... I can see my favorites. <laughs> and... As Sir Wang stares at you, uh, stares at you, Ace, he 
starts pushing the paramedic back and starts trying to get to his feet. And like, he, don't touch us. Yeah. It, it hurts. In a, in a strange moment of compassion and gentleness, you see your father uncharacter- uncharacteristically suddenly hugging your grandfather. <gasps> that, that, that. What, what? You have to rest. You have to stay seated. Na ano yung puso mo? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, well, you're never gonna see that when I was alive. <laughs> and you hear your grandfather, Sir Wang. Kinaya ko dati ng barrel. Kaya ko to. And as he's pushing against your father, you see his shirt lifting somewhat, and there's that terrible scar in his stomach. You've heard the stories of when he was shot in the stomach during the war. Oh no! Yeah, I go. I actually approach him and like I'll do this so that he doesn't rush in and try to do anything. I approach him and he says, "Sir Wang, tamana, tamana." I reach out and I actually will. I'm willing to take corpus damage. Is it corpus? Yeah, it's corpus, right? Yes. Just to extend yes. and have my hand go through him. Do you want to try to calm him? Um, just reminding you, system-wise, you do have the power to er- affect emotions with music. Yeah. So, I... parang when you when you reach his hand when you reach his hand and let it pass through, so he sees your ghost. You want to be singing and parang bringing his emotions to calm. Yeah, I will. Um, and just in that moment, if I can invoke any song, mm. any any like calming song in his mind, I would try to do that. If he's uh, the so that's to your me power before. of kenning. Yes. Uh, keening pala. That's your power of keening. Uh, mm-hmm. That will be a charisma keening roll. So that's charisma and two dice. Uh, what's my charisma? Normally, the difficulty is nine to cross to the land of the living. But you only need seven. Okay. Uh, oh. Clear. I, I will try to calm this man down so it's uh, two charisma. How much is my kinning? Uh, you have two. You have two skills, so that's two more. So you have four dice. Do you want yeah. to spend willpower? Yes, I would like to use willpower for this. Okay, I'll assume you have one extra success. I'll mark your sheet. <sighs> oh, okay. Yay. <laughs> Whatever's. Like whatever song he's hummed in the past, it will play as I reach out to touch him and let my hand go through. And Touching his hand and it passes through. You start humming him the song that he used to hum when you know it's during tests, and he's like just humming it to himself. And as you're humming the song, uh, both players, uh, not characters, both players remember the blind woman humming the same song when she was cooking. <laughs> The emotions get calmer. He, he stares at your stares at you as he sees the hand pass through. He hears the humming. He turns to your father, Ace. Uh, Ramon, Ramon, uh, uh, get me water, Ramon. And as your father stares at your grandfather, Sir Wang sits back on the floor. I'll, I'll wait here. Get 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 me water, please. Your father heads off. Sir Wang glances, uh, stares down, stares back at the two of you. You could see his calmer state thanks to singing. It has worked, Denma. Uh, yeah, Denma, you. because you also are um, um, uh, your demeanor is that of the Enigma. I'll allow you to recover three points of willpower. Oh, yay. Oh, and John, I... because your demeanor is mediator, I'll also allow you to recover three points of willpower. Yay. Oh. Uh, where do I refill for the viewers, that? For the viewers, the reward is bigger because this is a limited campaign and not a full game session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as Sir Wang Calmer now stares at the two of you, you see him glance around to see if people are watching and content that no one is. So, take a You're telling me you're both dead? I nod. Sadly, like... Yes. Then don't ac- accept it. What? Just like I did before. 
Do you have the black man? Mm, no. You mean black man? Um, the, 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 uh, the shadow. They call it the shadow. Do you have a shadow? <laughs> huh, yes. Then tell your shadow you're coming back. What, just like that? Of course. It can't be that easy. It's your life. Hindi pwede. Ganun pa yan kadali. Hindi pa. Sir Wang seems very frustrated. He wants to say more, but then voices, uh, and as the voices uh, catch your attention, the immense feeling of hope and love pours into the room like a wave. Uh, both of you can roll 6d10, and every success above 6, add that to your pathos. Yay! Okay. Sure, let's do that. I will do that because I need it. I need it. We all need it. Where, where did my... Ooh, the <laughs> ah, there... Six. A woman's voice echoes in the room as she calls out, Ricardo! And you both turn to see the woman pushing against um, the family members who are trying to guide her calmly. <laughs> run across the room despite being blind. And grabs Sir Wang. Nice. The two of you are staring at her. And as she grabs hold of Sir Wang, he looks at her, then looks at the two of you and seems a bit surprised. Both of you, please roll perception awareness. By the way, for the pathos roll, do tens count as two success? Yes. <gasps> okay. Yes. So I rolled, I rolled eight success. Then you're full up. You, you keep in mind, your pathos can go all the way to 10. Any beyond 10 is lost. Yeah, I, I'm maxed out at 10. Uh, so, so if you have Sobra, you could spend Pathos immediately to back to Corpus, and then you continue gaining your Pathos. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, I gained 8. How yeah. many Pathos did I have? I had 3 Pathos. I have 1 Sobra. So you can put in your uh, And then 1 Pathos is 2 Corpus. Huh? But, uh... So for your for in your case, Ace, puno yung Pathos mo. You could spend three of the core, the pathos to remove your aggravated damage. I will do that. And okay. I will remove two pathos. For you, Ali, how many successes did you get? I had two tens, so that's four. So I'll just put it all in my pathos. Four. Okay, you don't want to boost up one of your corpus? No. Because say your corpus is down to three. I'm, I, I, I'm okay with it being three. I want to live dangerously. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. So... You, he stares at you both, surprised. You see the blind woman rush and hug him. Roberto! And as she hugs him, you see her disappear. What was your perception oh. awareness? Oh, wait, I haven't rolled. I haven't rolled perception. Oh, shoot. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Perception awareness. Two awareness. Okay, so four um, dice. Four. Four dice. Here. We rolled the four dice. I okay. uh, I got a two one, five six six. I have a one nine okay. and four. That's fine. You both have successes. You're staring uh, as she dissipates and fades away, and you see your grandfather shake his head and mutters, "That is not nice." And the two of you are suddenly horrified as Sir Wang's shadow on the floor rises up impossibly to a seven-foot-tall black figure with elongated arms and legs. It has no face, but it has a hat. It holds a cigar in one of its hands. Uh. And as it stares at Sir Wang, it mutters, a little harrowing never hurt. You see Sir Wang looking at the floor and muttering, Stop doing this. I know she's dead. Oh 
work. The top hat figure with the red, the blood red necktie, looks now at the two of you, seeing you. Oh, it mutters. Now this is interesting. <laughs> they can see me. Mm. Oh, the music cue is freaking me out, man. You it's... are no friend. You are not a friend to my grandpa. It stares at you as you speak to it, and it mutters, You not only see me, but you're not terrified. Could it be, Mr. Wang? Could my suspicions be right? And it suddenly starts moving towards you, Ace. What do you do? Sword. Okay. Your sword's uh, out. It, it, right it like pops into your hand, and you're holding the sword up. It freezes mm -hmm. and stares stay at right you there. and mutters. Right Relic. Now we're talking. And then it turns to you, Ali. I do you see me as well? I slowly hide away from Ace, like, but my eyes are like locked into it, but I hide behind Ace like with his sword. It stares at you, but it has no face. It's just this black orb of a head. <laughs> you can feel it staring at you still though. Yep. And surprisingly, you feel your dog suddenly to your side, growling at it. It and it, it gives me the courage to be like the figure stares at you doesn't seem to care about your dog and then looks back at ace and mutters one word which you both have heard of that Hmm. Nobody said I've got about feathers before. I whispered that he's like, you said something about feathers before. I remember he said something about feathers before. I I didn't remember it at all. I just I just remember he said something. <laughs> well, these are the things linked to us, right? They're the things that keep you living. It turns mm. to Sir Wang. How interesting to see your fetters are dead. <gasps> it turns to Sir Wang. Doesn't that mean it's time to move on? <laughs> I'm still alive. In a fashion, yes. I am not done, but they are. Are we? We're still here. Uh, we still have things to do for Sir Wang. We have still things to do. We're not going anywhere. Heading behind Ace. It turns to your dog, Ali. And as it stares at your dog, you see your dog facing it bravely. They are silent for the next few seconds. You think they're talking in a way only shadows do. And it, it kind of slowly dawns on, on Ace that, wait, your shadow is this dog? Yeah. And I'm just like, how did you get a useful shadow? Well, mine is my dad. I, I don't know. I don't know how these things work. Okay. Best well, you go. You hear your father, Ace, and as you turn, you see your shadow dad. That is a very old shadow. It is best you go, Ace, before it decides you are part of its theater. Theater? What do you mean? 
I'll explain it to you. But only after you leave. We won't leave, sir. And you like... think... Oh, wait. You think your shadow is afraid. Hmm. Ali, you hear the same thing. As yes. you glance at your dog, your dog um, rushes off to one side, and as you follow your gaze, there's the wall with the window, and you see your reflection looking at you. We have to go. We, we shouldn't stay. No. Not when the shadow's that huge. We can't leave Sir Warren. He needs us, now more than ever. <laughs> He doesn't... He doesn't need you right now. Not in the way you think. I look at Sir oh. Wang. I'm all for you becoming destroyed and sinking into oblivion, but not like this. Not this way. Can I... peer at the other shadow? Which one? Uh, My grandfather's shadow. You turn to the large figure again. The figure which we will now reference as Mr. Jigsaw. It's all black, top hat, and this blood red necktie in the Jigsaw jagged line. Basically, it's um, mechanically speaking, I'm trying to use Soul Sight. Um, if you want to discern information on the shadow, you'll actually use something else. If you look at your Arcanoi, you have something there. So it's not Soul Sight. Ah, yes, casting it. It's Soul Sight. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Soul Sight. There you go. That's the one. So perception, Roll perception plus three. Your casting gate is three. Because I remember like getting a feel. So I'm like, okay, let's take a look at that. Um, where did I put my? Uh, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, one, eight. Wala, isa lang. Um, uh, ask one question, and I will answer it. <sighs> what is a good good question to ask about this shadow? Something so, you can see when you study it. Um, I guess it's like, why are... No, no. Like, I was thinking, why are they afraid? It's no. I mean, maybe something else. Like, Is this commission raid? They have to kill us. <laughs> they won't get the commission if they don't kill us. <laughs> sorry. Putak <laughs> sales. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Don't That's me. fine. <laughs> Humor, humor is a good way to deflect tension. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, can can I'm actually hold, stuck on like. What, can what he hold the I question? I'll, 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 let, I'll, I'll, I'll give you time to think. I'll give you time to think, okay. Ali. Your reflection is looking at you. Please, we must go. Not this way. I wait. I can't hear her shadow, or can I? No. You cannot hear her shadow. Okay, okay. I, but and you he hear can, a one... she cannot hear your shadow. But you can hear a one-sided conversation. No, I'm not going. Not, yes. not with Sir Wang. You only I... hear the one-sided conversation. Kay Sir Wang lang, you can both. You can hear both. And that freaks you out. I turn to Sir Wang. Like, I... we'll stay. We'll... Do you want us to fight? We will fight. I say that in a very, like, we, I mean him with the sword, but we will fight. We will stay. <laughs> he looks at you you see his face is also suddenly very nervous and to your surprise Sir Wang turns to you and tells you do you know your fetters have you recognized what they are I answer me girl do you know your fetters yes but but my then face go doesn't... to one of them now and stay there. Stay, stay close to a fetter. One that is still alive now. Uh, I follow Sir Wang's. Like there's like this. I want to stay, but this is Sir Wang's orders. And then I, I, I just think of, like, it was it, the library? No, no. Was it library? Library? If it is the place I am thinking of, I shall see you there. Now go. 
Okay, I, I tried to grab oh. ASIC. Okay, so we follow Sir Wang. We follow Sir Wang. We go. Ace, you feel yourself being dragged by Ali? Do you let her drag you? So while this is happening, what what's ringing around in his head is like, here, Ace realizes he's not sure what his feathers are. But he doesn't say anything. He's like, I'll see you again. Um, from a, okay, from another standpoint, how do the ghosts, or how do our wraiths know what their feathers are? Um, normally you can ask a monitor, someone who has life web, like Harun, to help you identify them, or you check the things you know you've held important in life. And uh, you will see, you will sense if it is it. The last way is, that's where you'll emerge from a higher wing. As you are heading out with Ali, you're still staring at Jigsaw. I need that one question. What is, is Jigsaw? On? So Jigsaw is a shadow. Yes. Jigsaw is Sir Wang's shadow. Uh... How can he? Okay, I don't know if this is a valid question. Like, how, go, 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 go. How can he have a shadow? But he was still alive. And as you're thinking this, and as you're being pulled away, you're staring at Jigsaw. You're looking at your father. And then you suddenly have a thought. You're not sure. But if you can manifest enough to be heard by the living or to appear as a translucent intangible apparition could it be possible that there is arcanoi to come back to life hmm. and as okay. you are pulled away by ali yep. you are suddenly terrified at the thought has he been both living and dead all this time? What does that make you? Are you like, you know, 25% dead? <laughs> Are you? We, we, we continue the scene where do you want to have moved to a new location? Do you want time to have passed? Do you want it's instantly outside the door? Baka lang you want some breathing time para your your role playing isn't in that agitated state. It's a bit yeah. calmer. I would just try to drag him to the library. Like that's that's. So this can my... be ours later at the library. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, ours later at the library. The two of you are there, calmer. Um, it but outside, assuming like early... we got there, like magabit, so the door would be closed. We can't go through it. So we're at the balcony area, which is. Uh, my spot. <laughs> Nasa labas yeah, lang siya. Sure. Her spot. Well, actually, my spot it, the outside. Actually, it was early morning. Uh, sorry. Uh, the students oh. were there in the previous game. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Word. Um, and then the fire alarm was triggered. Mm -hmm. Right. So it would probably be late night now, mm -mm. Uh, later in the evening. Yeah, the and the school be... library is officially still open. People can still come in and out because uh, they never close the library forever. Uh, but um, if for... you want to still be outside by the balcony, just that's fine. Just as a dramatic, yeah, just for dramatic cinematics, it's a balcony side. The one overlooking sure. the school. Because like for Ali... He's just waiting out there in the library to see if Sir Wang's coming. Because like he said, he would follow. So the, she's just pacing there. In the hours that had passed while waiting for Sir Wang, um, we can have some quick scenes for each of you. Hmm. Uh, Ace or Ali, who would, who would like to start? I actually will try uh, to have I, I... that conversation with Fetters for, with, with Ace along the way. But uh, okay. what is John's so, scene? You, you want Harun to be in the conversation? Okay, Harun can give her like an update of what she's missing, and I will take a bio break. <laughs> go go go! Uh, don't turn off your video. Just 
cover nope, the nope. monitor. Will do. Yeah. Will do. Thank you. Um, so Harun, um, uh, Harun shows it by using his powers, um, cool. as he did earlier in the evening to help you connect with Sir Wang. Um, he sits behind you and holds his hands over your head, plunging his fingers into your brain as he allows you to see glimpses of your other fetters. So as you can see, that life, that 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 family portrait, that is one of your fa one of your stronger fetters. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now let's adjust a bit, and there. I see a very thin strand connecting you to this this room. I believe this is a trophy area here in, in the campus. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. The my first my first trophy I think is still there. Actually, all my trophies from school are still there. But your strongest connection. He adjusts again, and it's somewhere further away. And you see glimpses in your mind of the tutor house. Oh. Yeah, I when I first after the car, I found myself there. I was, Meming was there. Didn't notice me, but I was there. This seems to be your strongest feather. And finally, he adjusts, and you see Sir Wang. He is faint, but he is visible. And then you see him wearing the bead bracelet you gave him. Oh. No. Okay. You realize as you're seeing the vision of Sir Wang, there's no sign of Jigsaw. Harun releases his hand from your head and tells you, and those are your fetters. As it goes, so long as you have your fetters in the land of the quick, you can persist. But once your fetters have crossed over, nothing will keep you from fighting against the pull of oblivion. But how, how did we become Sir Wang's fetters if... He, he talked about his, you know, his wound where he almost died when he t took the shot in the stomach. We weren't even born at that time. How did we become fetters? He looks at you. I'm sorry. You Fetters are only something the recently deceased can have. Are you saying your... Are you saying your grandfather... died earlier i mean he we were called fetters by his shadow and i don't like the only story i know of his near-death experience was with the gun yeah i mean when he got shot in the war but his this... eyes narrow and he turns to you ace am i misunderstanding things here your friend ali is telling me that you both have a grandfather who identifies you both as his fetters. Uh, he's my grandfather. But, uh, this guy who's apparently his shadow mentioned that we were his fetters. Right. You know the powers of Castigate. You can see others' shadows. Well, she could see him too. And I don't mm. know, does she have the same? Um, we could both see him. He glances at Ali, who... Uh, there. Do you have the powers of Castigate as well? Do I? Do I? Do I? Do I? Uh, I can get into a car, into a phone. Does that count, does that count as Castigate? No, I'm afraid that would be inhabit. Um, inhabit is a power which is common among the artificers. Castigate is a rarer power, one which was practiced by the pardoners. They used to be the 
the wraiths who were trained to communicate with the shadows of others, to bargain with them. Oh. And I, I don't... Bargain? So, we can bargain with the Momo in, in Sir Wang's side? Well, officially, we're all Momos, but yes. If we can find a... Uh, he turns to Ace. Are you a partner? I... I guess I am? I don't know. I seem to be able to... Between me and your stories, I seem to be able to interact with shadows more. I think. Then, then that would explain why it addressed you. It does not explain why it addressed her. Maybe it's powerful? I mean, we our sh shadows are we're afraid of it. Telling us to back away. Harun shakes his head. I'm, I'm sorry, your shadows were afraid of another shadow? Yeah. We, we were they not seemed so a little nervous. Well, my shadows... Seemed... Shadows don't see each other. They can't see each other. Well, our, my well, shadow ours can. Could see. Same, same. That doesn't make any sense. That can't happen. Well, normally, but something doesn't seem to be normal here. Well, Sir Wang, if he's been dead for a while... You know? He couldn't have been. I mean, assuming he had the powers of Embody and had learned to master it the way the Proctors have been able to. From what I know of the stories, a, a Proctor who has mastered Materialize can, yes, assume life to the point that they can breathe, they can even procreate. But you have to understand, this manifested state lasts at most an hour. There's no way your grandfather has been alive for decades. Maybe there's a way. Maybe he well, cheated death. There's no way he's been alive for decades under normal circumstances. But something is not normal here. Well, we are ghosts talking in a library where students don't realize we're here. Well, most don't. You see him glance and there's a girl who's staring at the three of you and shakes her head and gets a Red Bull. I instinctively sit up. Like, hi. That's too much Red Bull. And then I realized I'm dead. Oh, sorry. The girl doesn't seem to hear you, though. Okay. As she chugs it down, it seems she wakes up a bit more, and as she looks, she doesn't see you guys anymore. <laughs> those and, uh, those glance moments, he thought you saw someone. <laughs> oh my god. Interesting. Very interesting. Eight. Hey. Lesson 101s when it comes to shadows. Shadows can't talk to other shadows. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, they're not sentient individuals. They're they're the darker facets of our personalities. Uh, you mentioned your shadow appears as your father, and he yeah. embodies the perfectionist drive that you've always tortured yourself with. You mentioned your shadow appears as a dog. Um, did you have a traumatic experience with a dog? Or is it symbolic of something important to you? Uh, companionship? Loyalty? Yeah. Friends? I like... I like... I like dogs. I like hanging out with them. I was gonna inherit uh, Sir Wang's dog. Was it Jerry? But think George? in terms of 
you have to think in terms of insecurities. Your shadow, pointing to Ace, clearly embodies every time you felt you weren't good enough. And your father, as its image, captures that. Okay. Turns to Ali. If yours is about friends, did you always feel like your friends weren't really your friends? I look down. Like, maybe they're just tied to you, or maybe they just need you, and that's why they're your friends? I'm... I've prided myself in being self-sufficient. That... This... The f- when people need me, when I find myself useful, I can give my knowledge, I can help with homework, but I'll always feel that I never really had friends, like, I will always be the second, third, or the last option to hang out with. No one Your shadow either. looks at you. Neither of you can see my shadow. And I do not plan to tell you more about it. I, well, you said, but then you said I have the power to talk to shadows. Please don't. Do you try to see Haruin's shadow? Uh... <laughs> only if he's okay with it. It's like, well, um... I, I tell him that, you know, I... I could try to see it, but that's only if you're alright with me talking to it. He closes his eyes and slowly nods. Okay, let's take a peek. What is his shadow? Do I roll for it? Yeah, same roll as your first time, Soul Sight. Okay. Six. Let's roll. Five, one, three, seven, two, three. You focus on him, your eyes narrow as you start to see the being come into form. The being is sitting on his, his shoulders, spindly legs that are hanging in front of him, hands over his head. She is this crone of a woman, and you could hear her speaking. Oh, my son, I love you so much. A pity you are such a disappointment in everything in life. Yes, no. yes. No. I'm like, oh. Sounds like... Sounds like my dad. Looks at you. You're seeing... You're seeing what I think my mother would have been. Mm. I've never met her. Ah. Okay. I was raised in an adoption home and I never really knew my parents. So All deep right. down, there's a part of me that imagines how, how much love she would have given me. I and see. I know it's all fake. Because indeed... The end. I know she gave me away. And you see the shadow whisper. Oh no! I love you. I just wanted you to get stronger. That's why I left you. You see her closing it. Stop talking to me. They're all nasty, aren't they? They aren't well, called shadows for nothing. Well, except for Ali. Her seems to be more tolerable. For some reason. Very loving. It's uh, I would. I, I don't get your shadows. Why they're mean. Mine's been nice. It's nice until it isn't. When I first died, I was. I thought I finally reunited with my mother. Only to realize it isn't really her. Well. Echoing slam. The three of you look down the hallway 
to hear the, the door still shaking. You see a number of the students that are present stand up and you know give a respectable nod and bow as Sir Wang walks down the corridor. Mm. As he is walking the corridor, the three of you um, can see the seven foot tall creature that lumbers behind him. Mm. It's so elongated that it takes like six or seven strides of Sir Wang for one of those steps of the shadow following it. Mm. Harun is staring down. His eyes widen as he mutters, Oh God, you're wrong. You're wrong. You shouldn't be here. Harun turns, and as he turns, you see him um, whipping his hand to the side of the wall. It rips open, showing this maelstrom-like whirlpool of blackness, and he leaps through it, vanishing. It's the whirlpool shuts immediately as he escapes from the team, terrified at seeing the massive thing. We're wrong. What does that even mean? So it's not a shadow? Sir Wang comes up to the area and close to the balcony. He sees you all, both up there, but he waits. Some of the students come close and you see them, uh, the mano, when they bow their heads in front of his hands. Huh. You all hear the shrill phone. He pulls out the phone. Ramon, I am fine. No, I will not tell you where I am. Oh I am fine, all right? You did not tell me about Ace or Ali. And that is why I'm not talking to you. And he turns off the phone. <laughs> That's funny. Do you approach? Or do you motion him to go up? Uh, is the lumbering uh... thing still behind him? Yes, it's just there behind him. Uh, I am, so he's I, he's like he's like my five seven right, and then the thing's like seven foot behind him. I will run so. down the stairs and try to meet up with him. That's something like that. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I I kind of I get the idea. It's a huge. You you movie. sorry sorry Denma, you head down the stairs. Yeah, I tried to like because it Sirwar's there, so I can go there. Yep, you are I'm making following. your way down the dog following you I follow me. Uh, you make your way down as well ace your father watches you walk away and disappears as you're further enough because he just manifests beside you and as the two of you come in front of sir wang um the dog looks at you both and yes john you can see the dog the dog mm. goes up to sir wang and you see sir wang bend down and pat the dog Her dog? Yes. That is... There is some weird... St- I don't get it. Someone's lying here. Either Harun has been lying, or... something. Wang looks up, and looks at you, Ali, and asks, Is this yours? Papa. You always had a dog and I didn't know about, or is this... It. It? It stares at the dog and the dog growls and hurries back to your side. First time you saw the dog growl towards someone you liked. Oh, why why did you growl? The dog seems now again, parang kawawa, whining, licking your hand. Why did you... Sir Wang's okay. Uh, I, They're I... all liars. You shouldn't trust your shadows. Well, we don't disagree there. Are you okay, sir? Is the thing bothering you still? <laughs> it's still ticking. He taps his chest. 
So, how long have you been dead? The car accident. You realize you could see him fighting tears. Huh. So you're really dead. Um, it seems like it. He looks at you, Ali. He reaches his hand up to touch you, and you hear the shadow behind him. Don't. It will hurt her. And you see him stop. How does this... There's something strange. Why do you have a shadow? Unless you're not yeah. dead. He looks at you. He looks away. He has been with me since the first time I died. The first time you... So, sorry. I didn't hear you, Denma. How many times did you die? He looks at you. You see his eyes look tired and sad. Too many times. You've died we jump more into a once? We jump into a flashback. Who's playing Servan? Uh, si Denma. <laughs> si Denma. <una>. Fascinating. <laughs> Who will, who? You, Denma? John. John will go first because I, I went first, Kanina. <laughs> oh, John, John. We Take jump that. into a flashback. John, you're playing Sir Wang as your eyes open and you hear a woman crying beside you. Uh -huh. Your eyes open and your vision comes to focus and you could see the living room ceiling. You could hear the dog uh, whining as it's licking your face. Uh -huh. And you could see around you, the house has been totaled. Ugh. Terrible. Okay, I look around. What's around? You try to sit up and you find yourself in immense pain. It's like there's a, a lead weight in your midsection. And as you look down to see... You see the gaping hole in your stomach. Ooh, that ain't not, that's not good. As you crane your head backwards, you see the hole in the wall. You see the broken clock. The soldiers had done a, you know, they messed up the entire house. And it seems they left afterwards. Leaving the woman um, worse for wear, but alive. And it seems she had tried to get you out of the hole and lay you down on the ground. Oh. I still have the injury, right? Yes. Huh. Do you stand up? I check myself. Like, how does the injury look? Your hand reaches down and you see the gaping hole. It has a it was a hole that had been blasted open in your midsection. It's a bit larger than a papaya in terms of how big the hole is. Ooh, that's that's something. A pair of hands is suddenly on top of the opening. And as you look up, you see the pair of hands coming from Mr. Jigsaw. Spunk. <laughs> I slap the hand. Your hand reaches and slaps Mr. Jigsaw's hand. It lands solidly, hitting it. And Mr. Jigsaw stares at you. And you see it mutter. Do you deserve this? 
Do you deserve this second chance? Ah, uh, you know, I don't care if I deserve it or not. I'm taking it. Don't forget me. And as he presses his hands against your injury, you wake up screaming on the floor of the living room, then mother. You have vague recollections of what John was seeing earlier when he was playing Mr. Wang. Mm -hmm. But do know as you sit up in the living room, the blind woman screams upon hearing you scream. The dog is barking at you. But as you look down, you see the hole in your stomach closing. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. It's still a wound. It's still bleeding. But, you know, what was a hole with a chunk of organs missing, it's now a damaged surface, an injury. Game system terms, from lethal wounds, it has turned into a lethal wound and mostly bashing. Oh. Yeah. So, I... Like, I'm looking at it, I'm confused how, like, I'm no longer in the crawl space? You're in the living room floor. The dog is barking at you, it's terrified. The blind woman crawls up to you and she reaches and feels your face. Oh! She reaches down and she's touching your stomach and she feels the wound. <laughs> and you see her stand up. And in her blindness, she still runs straight down the living room to the closest shelf, which somehow she knew was there. She pulls it open and she pulls out this this circular shaped gaudy velvet thing that as it clatters to the floor in front of you, you see thread, you see needles, you see, you know, it's a sewing kit. Oh, okay. I thought a biscuit. <laughs> No, that's <laughs> ano yon, mas modern yon. At this era, it's still the ano, the ah, okay, okay. the arte ones. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Real. And, um, I wait for her to approach, and I try to, you know, like put her, put my hand again on hers, and I look if she's injured. You're looking at her. You're trying to see. She has bruises. She has cuts. Her hair was torn off her scalp a few times from the people grabbing her. But you see she's needle in thre thread in needle and then she reaches for the wound uh, and I, then she I, reaches into the kit, she grabs a comb and pushes it against her teeth. I, I, I put um my hand like over to like to stop her, like Okay lang okay lang ako. Kailangan natin yung Ikaw. Uh, sabi ko, pwede ikaw muna yung lugat mo, yung ulo mo. She smiles. Okay lang ako. Sigurado ka. And as she looks at you with a smile, the whole scene changes. Back to you, John. You're staring at the same woman. The two of you are standing in the shade of a vibrant mango tree. It is a bright afternoon, and in the distance, you could see the farmers waving. And you realize she can't see them, but she can hear them cheering, and she waves as well. Hmm. She glances at you. And you realize, you think now is the time to tell her. As you <laughs> finger the the cheap, but only ring you could afford in your pocket. Mm -hmm. I ask her. What's her name again? 
We've never mentioned her name. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know her name? Or have you realized you've never asked her name? What is her name? What is your... Uh, yeah, my... What is her it's name? possible you it's possible you always just addressed her with an honorific. That's nuts. <clears throat> what I asked for her name. She turns her head. Huh? Uh there's something I want to ask you, and I feel like I should use your pro- proper name to ask this question. <laughs> She smiles. Roberto naman. Di mo ba maalala? She leans close to whisper it to you. And as she leans close to whisper it to you, your eyes focus across the field. Your eyes widen as you see the rifle. You see the man, a straggler from the wire. Huh. Foreign features, tanned skin. The rifle fires. You block and cover her from being struck. Huh. And as you hit the ground, you see your stomach once again bleeding. Again. As you look up and see her, you see her turning. She just heard the crack of the rifle, but she doesn't know what happened. <laughs> and as you look to the other side, you see Mr. Jigsaw. Oh, hello again. You're an annoying schmuck. <laughs> and you are too attached to that ring. <laughs> this ring. No. I am not too attached to this ring. This ring is important to me. Last we spoke, you insisted you learn her name before you die. Do you know it now? <sighs> Do I know it? It's your call. You're playing Wang. <laughs> Yeah, I know her name. And our deal is concluded. It is time what? to die. No, 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 we don't know the name. We don't know the name. We don't know the name. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. It looks <laughs> I at you. Refuse. It seems angry, but we made a deal. What deal? That you must know her name before you die. What are they, what are they? Uh, she, she drops to her knees, realizing you're on the floor. She's calling for help. She's reaching and touching you, and you're realizing you're staring at your body on the ground, and you're standing beside Mr. Jigsaw. That's annoying. The body always is. But the deal is the deal, and we are done. Let us go and face oblivion. Uh, you and your oblivion. Don't tell me you have a new reason to stay. There's always a reason to stay. I... Name it. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Name it! Hmm. I'm gonna pause for a second. I don't know what reason no, no. <laughs> um, only because Only because this is a stream and we don't have time. I'll jump back to Mars! No! Name it! Curses. <laughs> I, I was like, yes, Mars, <laughs> help me. <laughs> oh, I'll be, in this moment, it used to be like, I 
promised a life with her. I can't hear. Oh no, I can't hear Toby. Oh no. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Cur oh my god. The, the Anino. <laughs> Mr. Jigsaw took the audio. <laughs> oh no. Okay, okay. That's funny. Yeah. Okay, For uh, I'm hearing you on the desktop. The headset is dead. But yes, I can <gasps> oh, hear you. Oh, shoot. I can ah. still hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, name it. I promised. Uh, I promised to spend my life with her. Ah, that's a good one. You promised what? I'll spend my life with her. Oh, great. I lost it again. Hello? Hello, hello. Hello? Hey, you're back in the headset. Oh, my <laughs> but the computer! It's, it's possessed! By <laughs> juicy Mr. Jigsaw, you're gogolo. <laughs> He's, he's, uh, yeah. You promised what? I'm sorry, I got cut off at promise. That, I promised uh, to... we would spend our life with her. Yeah. Jigsaw stares at you angrily, and as Jigsaw pulls back to grab you, he plunges his arms instead into your stomach. <laughs> you suddenly breathe again, and your eyes open. You see she is holding your belly. Saklolo, tulungan niya kami! The, in the I distance, you see I the farmers beating up the straggler from the war. I, I put my hand over her hand as if to reassure her that I'm okay. And then I look at her and go, You haven't, like, I didn't hear your name. Can you say it again? She starts saying her name over and over and over. She repeats her name so many times. As you fumble with the ring in your pocket. And we swirl again, a bit more forward in time. Denma? Yes! You are standing in front of the small church. And she is looking at you from across the aisle. Everyone in the small town are weeping and smiling as the two of you come in front of the priest. Standing before the priest, the priest turns to you, turns to him, and declares you are married. No. And as the bells of the church ring, and as the two of you uh, wave goodbye at everyone uh, and ride the ride the car back to the house. Mm. Uh, she turns to you and tells you, I've been thinking, maybe we should turn the house into a school. Yeah. Oh, origin story. <laughs> I feel like. School. That sounds like a magnificent idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, will say, I will say what John she said. That sounds like a magnificent idea. Yes. I, I, I like that. A magnificent school. We rush forward in time. We see the school grounds. We see the students coming in. It's a small body of like 10 students, but it's a start. We see her um, talking to the students and explaining to them the lesson plan. Um, the two of you can play Wang whenever you want. bahala who's in charge. I don't mind. <laughs> you're more united now in being Wang. Um, one of the parents is talking to you and man mentions, you know, we'd, we'd like to support your school more and we're thinking we could give you a donation. Um, is there something you want to build to make the school more prominent? <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, is I... there a specific structure you want to add to the school to make it even more, more recognizable as a campus? Uh, I mentioned... The uh, is there? I'm assuming there's a library. I would say if we can grow the library, well, it's a room with books. Yeah. <laughs> if we can extend the library, maybe also the auditorium where the students can use it as gym, you know, and stage for events for school. It would really help. We we have passage of time, change of clothing, different parents, more shaking of hands, more wings of the school. 
the house becomes a structure, the structure gains walls, the walls gain separate walls. Now there are two buildings, now there are multiple buildings. And as the two of you are standing, yes, you are now both playing. What was that? No, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a raid. <laughs> it, it's a school bell. Perfect. <laughs> That's yeah, a... <laughs> that was, oh, that was that was very well timed. I know. Uh, Thank you for the proper the timing. Women, yes, you are now both Perfect. representing Wang and wife. Um, looking at the school grounds, um, you realize it is getting harder to keep track of everyone because of how big the school is. Hmm. She turns to the two of you. I think we need something, something that helps everyone know when it's time for class or if it's a school bell. <laughs> I was thinking a bell, but I was worried that the church might complain that it will cause confusion when they hear our bell and theirs. A clock, maybe? Hmm. You realize it was a clock that brought you to my life. Uh, uh. Oh. Wait, what? Huh? What do you mean a clock brought you to your Good life? Point. What do you mean? That you could have left when the soldiers came. You could have run off and left me alone in the house. But you stayed, you hid. And though we nearly both died, it was surviving them that brought us closer. Mm. I, I, you know, hold her hand as I've done before, keep giving it a squeeze. We've always had time. And we flash forward the two of you watching the clock but then she drops to one knee something wrong something feels right something feels wrong the doctor discussing and explaining oh it's a child oh and in the years that pass ramon is born eh. the old man She does not make it. No! And as Sir Wang holds the child in his arms, he stares at the bed. The doctors explaining that they tried their best, but there was too much blood. Ayo. And the shadow leans close. That was a lie, Mister. Time to go. Isn't it? Her life lives through our child. Our legacy. This is starting to feel like a game, Mr. Wang. <laughs> and then he goes, It is no game. Her life, her legacy is through this child now. Very well. Her life. Her legacy, her bloodline, and if that line ends, then this game ends. Is that clear, Mr. Wang? Hmm. Is that clear, Mr. Wang? We shall see. In time. Well, well. We flash forward. More years, more memories, and we cut back to the current time. Too many deaths. And now Ramon no longer has children. And you, Ace, you were meant to have the next child. No. And I'm like, wait, I have a sister. Bloodlines don't carry through the through the daughters. 
Ja. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ay. Oh. <laughs> too real. Too real. <laughs> yeah, sadly, too real. Jigsaw <laughs> smiles and mutters. Say your goodbyes. Our deal is done. It is time to face a blip, Mr. Wang. No, this is the way. No. What? They owe me. Wang looks at you, Ace, and then you, Ali. They made promises that they have not fulfilled. That is true. Until those promises are fulfilled, then they owe me. Jigsaw turns to you too. Is this true? Yes. Yes. Name these promises. And you hear Mr. Wang. Sir Wang. Don't lie. It will know if you lie. I... 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 Actually, the player forgot the the dog's name, but I, but my character would remember the dog's name. I swear, Ali would remember. Yes. Was it Jerry? Yeah, we re <laughs> we, we recite the yeah the summary is fine. Summary is okay. And you recite each promise you made to Mister Wang to Sir Wang. Yeah. Uh, the promise that the students that you will help them accomplish their their goals this year yes the promise for the school to gain that achievement required this year mm. and that promise to help me to reduce the criminal presence in the city in the block in the school block by reaching and out to the nearby communities and communicating with them the possible goals and taking care of his Sir dog Wang, Sorry, and... and taking care of his dog. That was a big thing. But yes. And Bruno. Yes. Bruno Yun! Bruno! <laughs> and you hear Jigsaw. Then I shall embrace those as the last fetters. It stares at the two of you. Complete them. And I claim him for oblivion. Jigsaw turns away and starts disappearing, hmm. turning into strands of black thread that fade away. Sir Wang stares at you both and you see him sadness in his face. And you see him muttering, but if you don't complete them, then what is the point? Why should I stay at the cost of the students and the school? Hmm. This. How did you do it? How how did you? How did you stay alive all this time? How did we become your fetter? You always were important to me. Hmm. You are my fetters because you are my. You are. Turns to Ace. You are my life. Through you, she lives on. Mm. Her, her gratitude, her generosity, her love for others. Through you, my, my beloved wife lives on forever. And you, Ali, you are the daughter I have never had. <laughs> you are proof that my love for her leaps out even to those beyond the line. Hmm. And grows stronger than anyone can ever be. Interesting. Have you both die 
this was not how I saw it would be. Maybe I should just embrace oblivion. No! What would she say? You, give, you got this far and would give up so soon. Mm. He closes his eyes and sees flashes of her. The first time she offered the food. The first time she opens the door. The first time she sees she's awake. The first time she stares at the ring. The first time they stare at the church, at the church, the wedding. All these flashes of seeing her smile. In every one of them, despite her blindness, she was looking straight at him. <laughs> Very sweet. You can't give up just yet, sir. Maybe why? I have played the game too long. I will admit it was exciting. It was like it was like those those Greek tragedies or those legends of how the hero outwits the gods or tricks the minotaur or misleads the monster. Hmm. Now I've entangled you both in this game and I shouldn't have brought up the final promise. It's not on you. You have reasons to live and you kept going. And... She was... You can't give up now. You've gotten this far. And if you go into oblivion, you won't see her there. You know she's somewhere else. She's not in oblivion. I've been there. In the nightmares. How they twist things. The memories you have of her. Oblivion will not make it good. They will twist everything good you have they of say, her. They say there is an alternative. It is rumored to be real. But as you know, all the books we have of the afterlife do not match what we know to be true. Hmm. But there are those that say there is what is called transcendence. And that that is where the path to heaven to Valhalla to the happy hunting ground. That is the path that leads to the one true after. They say this is poor This half state of living and death. And I don't know why I could always see death despite being alive. Mm. As we near the end of tonight's session, what do you guys want to do? Ah. Oh. There's so <laughs> much I do not understand. Oh my god. I do you want to try talking to other to, to Harun again? He might offer advice. No, Do you yeah. want to try digging deeper? Check with NPCs. Ooh, I, if it's possible, to have a conversation mm -hmm. with our shadows. Mm -hmm. Maybe they may have the answers. You so you move off to one side. You find a mirror reflection. The and glass. Put it the glass back. door in the library. The glass door. Okay. See my reflection. You stare at your reflection long enough, it starts to move on its own. Yes. How can I help Sir Wan? Yeah. I want to help him. Why do you ask? 
I'm your friend. I'm not his. If you are my friend, you will help me get to Sir Wang, and I... I'll do what is asked of me. You as my friend. I'm starting to wonder how sincere our friendship is. <laughs> Maybe a small proof of it. There is a bracelet he wears. Ask him to destroy it. Will it help him? It will help me. Believe in you. Then I can help you. I'll think about this for a bit. And go. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a few seconds. I'll go you up to John. As you see Ali head off and you see her talking to herself in the distance, mm -hmm. Sir Wang's there in front of you. Do you talk to your grandfather more or do you try other things? I try to talk to my grandfather. I'm like, how? How can you be alive? He looks at you confused. Alive. And so just, and my shadow could have done the same as yours? I think, I believe so. I do not see why not. I fought to live. I demanded life. And so I live. So. Huh. I am no expert in how this works, Ace. As a young man, I was desperate. I... I was with so much death. But then... Her cooking. Her singing. And you know, now I realize it was her clock that drew me to that house. Mm. I heard... I heard the tolling... It woke me from my sleep in the bushes. I thought it was the church bells calling me. It was life. Grandmother. You're Lola Rosie. It's funny. For the first few years of courting her, I refused to say her name. I called her everything, darling, beloved, sweetie, honey. Because I fought for life. I demanded I needed to know her name before I died. Mm. I see. Then the day I proposed to her, the day I mentioned her name. Bah! A rifle. My stomach. Mm. I think our shadows are there. Waiting for us to give in. How does that? And how does it work? Your father looks at you. I don't think he knows anything. I think he knows even less than you. He can see. But I don't think he knows anything. Ah, uh, what to do? Your grandfather looks at you. Ace, talk to me. I went here to the library because you both said I'll find you here. So talk to me. I 
it's just this is all so confusing you know i'm dead and then you're you died but you're not you're not dead and then now i can It would be so easier if you just, you know, we all just. I don't know. I don't know. Your father leans close. Would you like to hold him? Hold. Would you like to hug him? Ooh. I can teach you. All you need to do is say yes. Not yet. Not now. Not now what? Your grandfather looks at you confused. You realize he does not hear your father. My shadow father is <laughs> Telling me I can hold you. Mr. Jigsaw, as I call him, he healed me. When the soldier shot me in the stomach, mm. even the second time, when the soldier, when the other soldier shot me again. And yet I... I think this... Go, go, go. No. Uh... It's just something not right about these things. They're angels of death, Ace. There is nothing good to be gotten from them. I am like those Greek tragic heroes. I have made the deal with death and I have come to the end of the game. I have come to a magnificent end. Hmm. Uh, is that everything? Is that it? I don't know. What else do we have when death comes calling? Nor hope, nor dream will survive. Perhaps love, perhaps loss. Perhaps tales and mourning. Mm. We look at you. Perhaps there is nothing left to hide. I cut back to you, Denma. Yeah. The bracelet. Destroy it. And I can pry. I can search into the tempest and bring you back an answer. We shadows have friends in places the living can never go. Okay, I, knowing I have abilities, I can do things with objects. I approach, my eyes fixated on the bracelet. You see Sir Wang talking to Ace, he seems to be sprouting poetry. Hmm. The two look heavy, they look distracted as they talk about, about death and its inevitability. What do you do? Uh, is there a way? Because I'm seeing my abilities. There is a thing called misfire. Can a malfunction cause like a break? Maybe? You've used inhabit. What you do know is mechanical things are easier to misfire. <clears throat> Physical things can, but it's harder. Do you want to try to possess the fetter and cause it to misfire? Yes. Okay. First, you assume the shell. 
you possess the object. Because this is your fetter, no roll is needed. Ooh. You suddenly disappear, and as you disappear, you suddenly realize you are wrapped around Sir Wang's arm. You could feel his skin against you, and you hate the fact that as a bracelet, you have no nerve endings. So you <laughs> can't feel that he's warm against you or he's sweaty or nothing. You just know you're wrapped around him. As you've assumed the shell, you now can attempt a quick misfire. Yes. Or you could claim it first as an inhabit to last longer within it. No, I was told You've to destroy it. You've never tried this to a feather before. I plan to, like, I was told to destroy it. This would help Sir Wang, so I will do this. It is strength and three dice. Your difficulty is normally six because this is your feather. Your difficulty is four. I will use... Wait, is it coming? How much willpower do I have? Sorry, yeah. Keep in mind, difficulty four means every die of four or higher. It's oh. not four success that's needed. Ah, okay, gotcha. okay. So I just have yeah, to... you're you're thinking, you know, you're thinking story path. Yeah, sorry. Wrong game, wrong game. Uh, Sorry, uh, classic, uh, no, cla classic world of darkness, variable difficulties. I have three successes. You have three successes. You disappear, you embrace and take possession of the bracelet. And I shall get back to you as we near the end of the session. John? <laughs> Sir Wang sprouts poetry. He looks at you and he tells you, Ace, it's not fair to you and Ali. You both are facing, you both have died and I should be mourning you. I, I should be celebrating your life. And here I am placing upon you both this game I have been part of in all my years. This is not fair. This is not right for you both. Perhaps not, but if there's one thing I've learned here is it feels good getting one up over your shadow. <laughs> he smiles. Ace, if you were in my shoes. If you were Sirwa and I was someone else, I was your promising gods. Would you do to me what I'm doing to you? <sighs> and don't lie to me. I am your grandfather. Be honest. Be honest. Part is I'm not sure. You see your father, the dark father. Aren't you? <laughs> what you're asking of us will drive us forward with a purpose. But Ace, you are dead. Shouldn't you finally claim rest? If I wanted to rest, I wouldn't be here. You see his eyes swell with tears. Out of habit, he reaches out and grabs your face. Ace! Ah! You feel his hands on your face. Oh, he that's does not pass through you. Oh wow! Your eyes widen as you feel you feel his touch. That's he stares tough. at you as he feels your face. How, how is this possible? How is this? Do you feel this? You do. Uh, yes. And as his eyes widen and he's about to say something, it's that moment. <laughs> the bracelet snaps on his arm.
Uh, I feel like I fucked up, but I'm going to own it. <laughs> John, Ace uh, is staring uh, at Wang. Sir when Wang the is staring snapped. at Ace. As the fallen bracelet hits the ground, he is still focused on you. How, how can I touch you? He brushes your hair, and yes, you feel his hands going through your hair. I don't know. He pulls you and kisses you on the cheek, and you feel the warmth of his lips. You feel his breath against your skin. God, you don't understand how you could miss feeling sensation, but you are feeling sensation. Hug. <laughs> what do you do? I hug him. And as you wrap your arms around to hug him, lose one corpus. <laughs> You pass through again. Uh, you look at him surprised. He stares at you. No, 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 no. He reaches and touches your face, and yes, you feel his touch. Why, why can I touch you and you can't touch me? I I don't know. I don't know. Your father I looks start. at you. I do. Your shadow Speak. looks at you. Speak. What do you My know? Son? He's not dead. He's just touched by it. And to close the session, then mother. Ah! The bracelet snaps. You destroy the bracelet, yes? Oh my god. Sorry, I, I did hear you. You destroyed the bracelet, yes? Does that make me eject out of the bracelet? Um, so first, lose that dot in Fetter. Oh no. Oh no. Because that Fetter has been destroyed. Oh, I'm sorry, that's two dots. Lose two dots in that Fetter. No. No. <laughs> and second, you're gone. You're gone, you disappear, and you open your eyes, and as you open your eyes, you see yourself in an empty room. It's your bedroom. You look around and you already suspect this is a harrowing. Oh no. Knock on your door. Hello? Do you answer the door? I... I... I, I try to hello. Don't hurt me. I'm doing this for Sir Wang. You, you hear outside Dan Dan's voice. It's me. Open up. Ooh. You're not real. I start crying. You're not real. You're not real. Of course I'm not. I'm your shadow. Open up. And you're a bit surprised. Why is it being honest? It's not torturing you. It's... I... I... I go near the door. It's like, I did what you asked. This is for Sir Wang. What do you know? I know you did what I asked. That's why we are able to talk now. You're in my realm. Open up. Is the dog there? Honey, I'm the dog. Open up. <laughs> I, I open the door. <laughs> and as you pull the door open, you see your corridor, right? The, the dorm room corridor. Imagine if the dorm room was recreated by people holding... Alam mo yung parang different people are holding parts of the wall and as they hold it, it looks like the corridor. Mm -hmm. Different people are holding parts of the floor. So, when you open the door, you see them, ay, parang they're all catching up to make it look like it's the corridor. Mm. <laughs> and then you see her standing there in the like middle. Fragmented. You see Dan Dan Dan. But then, you know it's not Dan 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 because everything's monochrome except for the face, which is like stapled on. You see staples mm. connecting the face. Oh, that's something. Mm hmm Let's not waste time. You're in the Tempest. 
It's a harrowing, but that also means I'm closer to my kind and I can ask questions. Boy, do I have answers for you. Okay. She walks into the room and as she talks to you, as she approaches you, there is a catch, however. You're gonna have to fight your way back if you want to tell your friend what you learned. Okay. Will you help me fight? You know I can't do that. It has to be your choice. I want you dead, remember? Fair enough. Mm. I appreciate your honesty. So, about your... About your Wang? Sir Wang. One, he's alive. But two, not all of him is. Okay. Mm. That thing hovering around him? It's not a shadow. It's a <laughs> specter. Oh, can we beat a specter? Specters are what happen to wraiths when they've lost hope and love and compassion and they are filled with nothing but rage and power. But they only happen to wraiths that don't get destroyed. Instead, they, they become consumed by their dark passions. Mm. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I'm, 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 oh, that face of like, yeah, I'm answering, you know, like when you tell a teacher, yeah, I understand, but your face doesn't. She rolls her eyes and knows you're lying. Your beloved Sir Wang had a twin. <laughs> And the twin still part of him. It was probably part of him barely alive, barely conscious. And it died that day he was shot. And to close our session. That was a mindfuck. <laughs> we see Sir Wang as a child scratching his stomach. Asking his mother why his stomach always scratches. We zoom in and we see a strange birthmark. It's like a growth, a bump of some sort. Wang telling his mother, When I scratch it, it feels funny inside. And the mother saying, Just ignore it. You know, birthmark lang yan. Pigsa lang yan. <laughs> That's very interesting. Upon his death, or upon his brush with death, the blast killed that part of him. And for all those years, that the brother that was part of his body and never had a life of its own finally found death. Hmm. It became Mr. Jigsaw, a specter filled with the desire for his conjoined twin to finally die with him. Ah, that's a mess. Oh. Jigsaw stares. It's time to die. No! And Jigsaw realizing, well, it's the part that is him. He places his hands on where the wound should be. He vanishes and heals him again. He's Your the one who should die. Mr. Wang is two people in one. Uh. Or rather, was two people in one. Was. Oh my god. That's the annoying. whole corridor shakes, giggling, laughing, and then stops. This is freaky. If you have more questions, I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are two wolves in me. The, the derp and the real. <laughs> But yes, oh my god, that twist, the whole, not what I expected. It just keeps getting better and better with each session, and I'm mind blown. I'm going to need time to process um, it. Safety check, everyone okay? I am great. Too, too graphic, I'm, I'm, too yeah, I'm, I was yeah. great. Thank you for, I did give um, content right. warning to the, the audience, because, you know, uh, we weren't expecting to touch upon war and stuff, so I made sure... 
everybody had the content warning for that. But for me as a player, it was great. It was wonderful. This is like, this is my territory of knives. <laughs> it was intense, according to Jan, and they agree that uh, it was the suspense is good. So thank you again for. This is also why I had to check earlier. Uh, do we go deeper or do no? We keep it go closed? dark. We go dark. <laughs> so it was fun. It was fun. It's a good one. Yes, and it was fun oh, doing my. a back and forth with John on like playing the flashbacks. That was a very interesting. One. Uh, also, me who has been born with a twin who was surgically removed soon after. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh! I, I'm I'm so sorry. I hope I hope we didn't trigger anything, Van Vanua. <laughs> <laughs> Not with us. Yeah. 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 I, I will thing. admit. I got inspiration from a lot of old stuff I read as well as Cassandra Nova. Yeah. Um, but yes. That sounds very <laughs> familiar. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you for everyone that joined in. And we will have, unfortunately, our final episode next week. I'm not ready for it to end. But mm. as with all stories, there is a beginning, <laughs> a middle, and an end. So I hope you guys can join us in the next session the final session for magnificent siwang uh thank you again toby for just being a wonderful storyteller and just bringing us on this roller coaster ride figuring out wang's story our stories how they all come together it's just been a wonderful ride i'm all for the knives and the pain it's like and i do love the contrast of like john's like not again and i'm like <laughs> crying on the side <laughs> it's lovely it's beautiful um yes so we will now read Stubby Tabby, it's a cat mom who is playing one of my favorite games, Darkest Dungeon. So I think it's fair that after some harrowing darkness of Wraith the Oblivion, we go raid out to somebody who's playing Darkest Dungeon. So do send the standard emotes for now, because it is late and I'm feeling empty. Send Bro. cheese, send my regards, and again, thank you, Toby. Thank you, John, for being part of this. And see you guys on the next stream. Bye. 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 Our overconfidence is slow and insidious <laughs> killer. Okay, I'm gonna just grab this. And we rate.